Hello, everyone. Welcome back. My name is Niles, and today I'll be covering what is rippling on the XRP ledger. So with that said, let's dive right in. So rippling simply refers to a process of settlement between multiple parties who have trust lines for the same token. And more specifically, rippling is a setting on a trust line that can either enable or disable the interchangeability of currencies with the same ticker and different issuing accounts. When transacting on the XRP ledger, rippling can create capital efficiencies by allowing multiple gateways to work as one and thus reducing spreads and slippages when trades are executed. To further clarify, here's an example. Let's say in your wallet you have two trust lines set for two different currencies, and the two currencies have the same ticker, in this case USD. With rippling enabled, this would mean that while sending or receiving USD, settlement between parties could occur with either USD issuer, Bitstamp, or GitHub. For non-issuing accounts, such as my personal XRP Ledger wallet, enabling rippling can be undesirable because it lets other users shift obligations between tokens with the same currency code but different issuers. For instance, I'd prefer to keep rippling on its default setting, which is disabled, because if one day I unknowingly add a fake token with the same ticker as one of my real assets, I wouldn't want to risk having the real tokens from the trusted issuer replaced with fake tokens from a potentially fraudulent issuer. It's also worth noting that the process of rippling requires that all parties have trust lines established for the specific tokens being exchanged. And as I mentioned previously, rippling for XRP ledger trust lines is disabled by default. Also, XRP will never be used to facilitate rippling. Here's an example of rippling in action. In this case, we have three XRP Ledger users and two issuers of USD Stablecoin, GitHub, and Bitstamp. Also, user B has Rippling enabled. The transaction we will demonstrate is user A sending user C one USD. So initially, user A has a balance of 10 GitHub USD User B has a balance of 20 GitHub USD and 10 Bitstamp USD, and user C has a balance of 10 Bitstamp USD. When user A submits the transaction to send user C one USD, the result is the following. User A's balance decreases by one GitHub USD. User B's balance increases by one Bitstamp USD and decreases by one GitHub USD because it has Rippling enabled. And user C's balance increases by one Bitstamp USD. One way to enable or disable Rippling on a trust line is through the Sologenic DEX. Here you can change the setting simply by navigating to your wallet portfolio and selecting Add Asset. Here under the Show More tab, we can see the option to enable or disable the rippling flag for the trust line. So in summary, the process of rippling involves updating the balances on the trust lines between parties involved in a transaction, with the issuer acting as a passive intermediary. This allows for the efficient and secure transfer of value between parties without the need for a central intermediary or clearinghouse. And that will conclude today's video. I'll be sure to include links to more information about rippling in the description box below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.